to be the pastor here at the Salem Methodist Church. Uh, and as we get started today, I'm going to start by passing around this clipboard. Uh, some of you all know that our sweet Karen Stansberry, who's been our office administrator for 16 years, that she is uh, chosen for medical reasons to step down from her position. And, um, but we love her and we're going to miss her. And so uh, we're going to be circulating this card if you'd like to sign it, leave a word of encouragement, whatever. Uh, thank you, Ed, please. It's going to be around, and then at the end of service, uh, ushers, if you don't mind, would you place it in the back there, that little table? And if anybody misses it, you're welcome to put a note on it after service. I'm sorry, choir. I was sitting there right in the middle of your free loop going, I'm going to get you guys to something. We'll leave it in the back for you, okay? <laughs> I also have some difficult news for us. Uh, for those of you that have not seen the email, um, but our sweet Peggy Moffat, who's been a long-term member of this congregation, has very unexpectedly went home to be with our Lord and Savior. Uh, Miss Peggy has volunteered here for a very long time. She was a part of this service here. And uh, though she dealt with some medical concerns throughout her life, this was still very unexpected when it did happen. I've been working with her family, and uh, right now we are planning to have a service this coming Friday at 1 p.m. This coming Friday at 1 p.m. right here in this room. And I say we're planning on it because the family is still trying to figure out what death benefits are available to them. Um, but because she's part of this congregation, church, please know this. Because they're part of this congregation, we don't charge anything. I don't charge anything for, for funeral because it's family. Okay, uh, But if anything changes, I anticipate we'll know 100% for sure by Tuesday. And I plan to send out an email to the whole congregation. If you don't get the email or you don't do email, feel free to call me. And I'll be happy to update you on any changes. Also want to let you know uh, that today is the last Sunday to sign up for our new members class. If you're interested in becoming a member of the church... Or if you just want to know a little bit more about what is it that the Global Methodist Church teaches, um, I encourage you to put your name on a piece of paper, new members class, please print, I, I read printing better, and uh, your phone number, put it in the offering plates. Uh, even if you just want to know more about what is this new thing called the Global Methodist Church. We've been saying for a long time that we're changing our name so that we don't have to change anything else. And that is very much true. But one of the things that the Global Methodist Church is emphasizing is we are actually going back to our roots in many ways. And we're focusing a little less on just um, missional care through finances and through helping others. But we're adding on to that the spiritual care of discipleship and spiritual growth and evangelism. Um, and so we are not changing as much as we are trying to seek back to our Wesleyan roots, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this class. Lastly, I want to update you on our what we call our Salem Grocery Store. In the Fellowship Hall, there's a ton of food. Uh, we have two people that bring that food regularly, one person every week. Lots of fresh vegetables, sometimes fruit, bread, all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and we've come up with a new policy on how to care for that stuff, because by the end of the week, that beautiful food that does go bad without refrigeration kind of gets to be a little bit of a fungus among us, you know? And so um, what we're doing is we're, we're letting the congregation know, please, please feel free to get some after service, before service. It'll be here all the way up until Tuesday evening after dinner church service. And then, um, uh, then I take whatever's left over that easily goes bad, and we're going to kind of give it back to the Lord, okay? We're going to put it... Uh, we're going to let it go to the landfill and recycle. Uh, so for that same reason, if you know anybody that is a pig farmer or a goat farmer and can use some of that resources, please speak to me afterwards. We'd love to be able to connect, uh, connect them with our resources. Anything else for the good of the family? Y'all join me in a word of prayer. Papa God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your home. To spend some time with you. To connect with you. 
Holy Spirit, we pray that as we seek to enter a little deeper now, that we would just bring you honor and praise. That everything we do, from our words to our thoughts to our meditations, that, that you would guide us, teach us, mentor us. We thank you, Father, and we pray that in all of this, you and only you would get all the glory and honor forevermore. Amen. Cornelius called two of his servants 
and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. The word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Unless that's in the wrong spot. Why does that feel like it's in the wrong spot? It is in the wrong spot, isn't it? No, you're fine. Okay, so there was a little mix-up. It's my fault. Um, we're going to do our second hymn in just a minute. Let's continue with our tithes and our offerings first. And, and after our doxology and our pastoral prayer, we'll do our second hymn. Thank you. and singing praise unto God. Please stand as you're able and join us in singing the doxology.
helping them feel welcome by seeing that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. two weeks ago. It can be orange or red. Okay, can you give us another clue for those who haven't hung out with you in the last two weeks? It's orange, red. It has some white. It has fur. And it's an animal. So this one is stuffed. It's orange, red, and white. It has fur. It's an animal, and it's stuffed. Any idea? No. Me neither. How about you guys? Any idea? That, that, that's so specifically vague, isn't it? I love it. No, it's okay. You're doing good. You're doing good. I'm sitting here trying to think of what it is, too. But you're doing a good job of giving us a description. All right. Well, I think you stumped us. Go ahead and open it up and show us what it is. Curly. Curly. Ah, your fox. Yes, my new favorite fox. Your new favorite fox. I love it. So what does the fox say? Anybody else get that reference? <laughs> Did you have you all ever heard that really wonderfully, in my opinion, a little annoying song? What does the fox say? It's it's a song that was popular about I mean it came out about I don't know, five, eight years ago, something like that. And it literally just repeats itself. What is the fox saying that just makes a noise over and over? Neat, 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 neat. Just goes on and on and on like that. And it was wonderful, and it was fun, and it became crazy popular, and it had like zero lyrics to it. What does lyrics mean? Lyrics are the words of the song. Now, what does the words of the song do besides sound fun and rhyme? Um, makes her get fun. Say that again? Makes her kids have fun. Makes her kids have fun. And it also has a message, right? Really? Yeah, I mean, usually there's a... A reason to a song. There's an old joke that if you play most country songs backwards, you get your girl back, your truck back, and your dog back. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, this was a fun song that had absolutely no meaning. It was something a bunch of people love to listen to over and over and over again. But it means nothing. You know, put your legs together. You know, sometimes. In the world, the world can give us messages and stories, or sometimes it can just make noise. But the one that brings us the truth is Jesus Christ. Did you know the Bible actually talks about this too? It talks about love. It says without God, love is meaningless. The Bible says it's like a clashing gong or a clanging cymbal. It's just noise. But without God, love is also kind of meaningless because people change it and, and they say, if you love me, you'll do this or that. It happens without a reason either. There is no lyrics. There is no message behind it. And so no matter what the world tries to tell us, we got to remember that with God, there is always a reason for the story. There's always a message something for us to learn and though sometimes the world comes up with funny silly songs or stories we got to remember that it is god's word that does the teaching to us and sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in the world that really just makes a lot of noise y'all have any relatives that say a hundred words and say nothing the whole time just make a lot of noise let's pray together Dear God, Dear God, 
We thank you for your message. We thank you for our message. That teaches us how to live. That teaches us how to live. And love. And love. And follow you. And follow you. We pray you'd help us. We pray that you help us. Understand it more every day. Understand it more every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. All right. Here's your fox. Here's your box. Foxy. And here's the door. I love you. Now go. Bye. <laughs>
he became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opening and something like a large sheet letting down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-legged animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times. And immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent from Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out and asked if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are here for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to them, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's take a step backwards here for a minute, all right? Let's start with our last or our first scripture, if you will. Well, let's talk a little bit about Cornelius the Centurion, all right? Um, it's interesting because the Bible actually tells us quite a bit about this guy. So first of all, he is a Roman soldier. And what you need to remember about the Romans is that during this time, they are a world-conquering, oppressive people. Um, their job was to come in and take over and have complete control over the people. As a matter of fact, they were known for being pretty violent, aggressive, take advantage of people uh, financially and labor and in other ways. And so this is who this guy is. This is who Cornelius is. Not only is he this, not only is he a, a soldier in the Roman Empire, he's a centurion, which means that he is like a platoon leader. He's a commander over other soldiers. In addition to all of this, all right, we, we learn that he's leading an Italian regiment or a regiment known as the Italian Regiment. And I was listening to a preacher uh, as I was preparing for this morning talk about this a while back. And he said, so that tells us two more things about him. Number one, he was probably very hairy. And number two, he talked loud. If he's part of the Italian regiment. And he said, he's allowed to say that because he himself is Italian. And so that's why I quote him, because I'm not Italian. So I'm not saying that. But what's really interesting about this guy, about Cornelius, 